Hey guys, still here and welcome to episode 2 of the German campaign 1910. Normally I would start these episodes with an Admiral's log, but there hasn't had... Well, we haven't had any action. There's nothing to report. In case you missed the previous episode, I highly recommend you watch that one, because I designed four different ships. They each have their own role, which I go into great detail in the previous episode. Right now, it is time to start the battle for the North Sea, the English Channel, potentially a bit of the Irish Sea, and occasionally the Baltic Sea. Let's see where the Brits and we clash. And it is over here in the Baltics. And we have a bunch of heavy cruisers, six of mine, squaring off against four of theirs. Interesting. We've got the Aurora, the Black Prince, the Urialis, and the Leviathan against the Atlantis, Hertha, Comoran, Lippe, Mecklenburg, and Saxon. Probably everybody is operating with cadet level crews, so nobody's going to hit anything. This should be amusing. Now, as opposed to normal designs, I actually do not have torpedoes. So that's going to make the battle a lot more interesting. Uh, I want to detach everybody. You're going to join the Lippa. Lippa is Div 1. There, Cormoran. Uh, yeah, you're also going to join Div 1. Okay, you are Saxon Div 3, you're going to join that, you're going to join that. Boom. Okay, two divs. I want these guys to operate in tight formations. And let's see if we can find the enemy. I'm going to slow the boys down. Make sure everybody takes up their position in the formation. And I want to see about these British designs. What are these guys going to be like? And potentially more importantly, can my 7-inch guns actually do any kind of damage? Because, uh, well, it's the biggest gun I have. The heavy cruisers should be capable of eliminating them. But you never know. All sorts of weird designs can be had by the AI. Again, in case you missed the previous episode, the class that we have over here has bow and stern 7-inch guns. 5-inch casemates. A few 4-inch guns and a bunch of 2-inch guns. So against the British heavy cruisers, um, I'm assuming that we're going to be able to burn them down. Because that is what these guys do best. They are burning down targets, they're eliminating bigger ships. So that, or, well, not strictly bigger ships, but ships of their own class and smaller. So against destroyers, light cruisers, the occasional heavy cruiser, although I had more spec my battleships. To go up against heavy cruisers. Oh well. I'm going to slow the lipid down touch so that the Cremoran can catch up. Where is the enemy? As it turns out, the enemy is extremely close. This is a night battle. It means that you really cannot see each other until you're right in each other's face. The range is 2800 meters. That is how close we have encountered the enemy. So immediately everybody opens fire. But mostly with an AP salvo, which considering the angle, I don't think is really going to do much. So let's turn to starboard and bring all the 2-inch guns to bear against the target. Identification should be swift. The target is so close that it sh really shouldn't take us that long to get a lot of information about it. I'm going to try and squeeze it in between both formations. Let's see. You got... You got 9-inch guns, 4 of them. You got 22 3-inch guns. Good lord. That's a lot of firepower. Uh, two 5-inch guns, a couple of th more 3-inch guns, and some 2-inchers. So these things are packed to the gills with casemates. And that is an interesting design, because it means that they potentially have weak spots. Casemates are basically holes in your hull. And they can be exploited as such. What do we have here? The Black Prince. Maximum bulkheads. No torpedo launchers. This is excellent. 21.2 knots. They're not fast. Uh, at this range, we, <laughs> we really can't bend them. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have to burn them down. That's probably going to take a while. They have armor group 3. Barbette 3 armor. Wow. Um, Anti-flood 2. That's not necessarily an issue today, because I'm not trying to torpedo them. Nor can I really pen them. 
semi-balanced rudder and auxiliary two, that auxiliary engine could be an issue. Because what they can do is very, very quickly put out fires. So everybody focus fire on the Black Prince. Focus on crippling that ship as much as we can. If we can't burn it down yet, then at least we might be able to cripple their main superstructure. And thereby reducing their damage control ability as well as their accuracy. Even though accuracy is already pretty terrible. There's the fourth heavy cruiser, so we now know where all of them are. But just the rate at which these guys can put out fires is disturbing. Because I basically can't hurt them that much. I hope I carry enough shells for this. Let's see what happens if I put these guys on auto selector. I think we're going to see a ton of ricochets. Ricochets are blocked. Seems the Black Prince is already falling back. I'm going to try and isolate the Urialis by cutting the Lippus formation directly in front of them. And seeing that that's going to work. Switch fire. We're going to hit the Urialis with everything we have. I want you guys to increase speed to full so we can follow in the Black Prince with the Saxons group. The ship is taking a pounding, but so far it's barely registering. The superstructure damage is there. The rest of the parts of the hull are taking some damage, but really nothing that serious. Chance to pen? Even at 500 meter range is a mere 27%. Whereas they have a lot more opportunity to pen me. Come on, I want to cut you off from your group. Damage to the main gun? Now you have me interested. That is not what I was expecting to do. Damage done and damage taken is fairly even at this point. Look at these guys duke it out. All two inchers should be capable of hitting the target. Note how so far, I don't think we've inflicted a single flooding. Yes, we've started fires, but no floodings. Whereas they have. The Lippa once again has flooding on her, but I don't think that's going to be that much of an issue. Now, I could go all crazy German and immediately pr proceed to ram the Urialis with the Lippa. But I think that would be in poor taste. Although, <laughs> I don't think I have a choice in the matter anymore. Because the Lippa just got rudder issues. You guys are probably going to be extremely ineffective. But, now we're still going to try and burn them down. Because I don't think we have another option. I should have put torpedoes on these ships. That would have made an incredible amount of difference, but I didn't. I kind of forgot about them. So we'll just have to duke it out. Secondary tower, 71% structural. I'm going to detach the Lippa from the Div and have the Atlantis and the Cormoran turn to port. Following that ship in. We are ahead on damage dealing. There. Flooding on the Atlantis. That's really not what I want to see. This is what happens when you put a ship type, like the heavy cruiser, up against a ship type that is not really designed to fight. It just doesn't do that well. It can kind of do the job. At expense. Because there will be a lot of damage. But... It's going to take a long time until Urialis actually takes the hint and starts flooding, if at all. And the fires that I was hoping for are not materializing. The amount of fire damage is not there because they have this exceptionally good damage control ability. It's not like they don't care about 
damage or about fires, but really not as much as I would have hoped. More flooding on the Atlantis. I think it's time to pull the Atlantis a little bit further back. Because Atlantis has three incidents of flooding. I would love not to lose any ships in the first encounter. Cormoran, carry on. Damage to the funnel. Superstructure destroyed. The main tower is gone. Now we might have an opportunity to set more fires. Okay, I want you to just retreat. Destroyed main gun. Which one? Your stern? Yeah, the stern gun's done. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. What a slugfest. Bit of a run in between Atlantis and Lippa. Lippa's been able to completely fix her flooding. I would love to put these heavy cruisers to a target that they can actually kill. This is not it. Also, where did the Black Prince go? We have lost contact. All right, time for some more drastic measures. Cremorin is going to have a bit of a chit-chat with the Urialis. A chit-chat that should lead to the destruction of the Urialis. At expense to the Cremorin. But if I can sink this, the Brits are down a 7.1 million heavy cruiser. I am down 5.6 if mine sinks. Ramming damage is starting to add up. Although by some miracle, I'm still not inflicting any kind of flooding damage. There, finally. I think Cormoran's going to be uh, retreating. <laughs> For now. Oh, damn. So despite that little run in, Urialis, basically unflooded, is still fully functional. Let's get you to pull back. The Atlantis is safely disengaged. Aurora is burning. Why have they not put that out? I could throw the Lippa into the Urialis as well, but I really don't want to. Oh, shit. Hold on. We're inflicting a lot of friendly damage on the Lippa. Hertha, I need you to cease fire. Because you're being a bit too dangerous to your own fellow shipmates. So is the Cremoran. 8% structural integrity left on the Urialis. I wonder how the game is going to treat this. Because at the moment, I'm not sure who's inflicted more damage. We're so close. Arguably, though, if I can kill the Urialis, that would be a win. Poor Urialis is being surrounded by heavy cruisers. I think her bow turret's also... No. No, her bow turret's on fire, but it's not dead yet. 3% structural. This is a death by 5,000 cuts. <laughs> Although I haven't hit all of those. So about 1,200 shots were connected with the Urialis. Like a pack of hyenas, we circle our prey. Still got the Leviathan coming in. Lip and Cormoran are okay. Oh, there's the Black Prince. Shit. 
I really don't want to see the Black Prince here. Come on. Done. One cruiser down. You're definitely going to retreat. You're also going to retreat. Are you being hunted down? No. The Black Prince just kind of randomly encountered that ship. Okay. So now it's a three versus two. But potentially with more dangerous British warships. Um, yeah, this is going to take a lot of time. A good deal later. The battle ends in what the game considers a victory, but I consider it mostly a Pyrrhic victory. I was able to sink the Leviathan and the Urialis, leaving the Black Prince and the other heavy cruiser to survive. However, this came at great expense to my navy, because while all of my ships survived, they took a lot of damage. They're going to be out of commission for a long time. Let's see just how bad it's going to be. I did get a lot of victory points for that, but it's going to hurt my ability to operate in the east. Three months, two months, four months for the Hertha. These cruisers are not happy. These cruisers are not going to be doing very well. Now, the cruisers that are being repaired, and this goes for every ship that's undergoing repair, they are more expensive per month. Because, for example, the Rune is currently just in normal sea states or sea control conditions. It's 346,000 a month. The repairing Hertha is 493,000 a month. So it is vastly more expensive. And of course, this goes up even more when you're fixing up your battleships. Now that was one fight that we kind of won in the Baltics. It did come at the expense of two of their cruisers, but not convinced. Let's see what else we can find. Well, we can find that we're being blockaded. The British Empire has a lot more tonnage than we do. Holy shit. 863,000 tons? And we, lost, we start losing transport ships. This is not good. Now, I do have some budget, but at this rate, I'm going to be out of a budget almost immediately. Um, I'm going to have to reduce my tech budget by quite a bit and just make sure that I don't bleed as badly while I try to find the enemy. And just get rid of them as quickly as I can. A battle cruiser oh, versus the Duke of York. Uh, this is not a fight that I want. Because this is not what the battle cruiser was designed to do. Nine inch guns against the battleship? No, thank you. We're going to turn tail and we're going to look for a better encounter. I was able to successfully avoid the encounter with the battleship because I really do not want to lose the Hessen. She's 16 million worth of battlecruiser, and she is far too important to take on a battleship. Nevertheless, I am being blockaded. This is going to start getting pretty painful. Let's see if I can at least deal a blow in return. Because my destroyers have been able to find the prize. The Prince of Wales. My four 100, uh, sorry, 1100 ton destroyers are going to take on the 25,864 ton Prince of Wales. If I can kill this, that's going to really hurt the British. Let's see. Target to the west. I want to have my ships in a line abreast formation. Because that way I can make sure that I have all of those pretty torpedo tubes of theirs standing by at the same time. Sadly though, the AI is generally pretty terrible when it comes to f uh, holding a line abreast formation. Because it is far more complex than going with a simple line astern. Contact spotted. There's the battleship. Situation. It's morning. It's not terribly good weather. It's cloudy. Uh, we're going to just... We're just going to loop for a little bit. I do already have range on. But they've spotted... No, they have not spotted me. This is excellent. Okay. Detach all the ships. I want you to go there. I want you to go there. You're going to go there. And you're going to go there. Power through. We're going to prepare the ambush. I want the V7 slightly slower. Okay, we have been detected. The V7's coming under attack. 
I think that with my little pack of predators, I can very quickly get rid of that battleship. As long as the Seven can keep up a distractionary force, the Prince of Wales is going to use all of her armaments to go after the V7. She has a green level of crew training, so her accuracy is not really up to par. 10-inch guns on the sides, bow and stern. 7-inch guns on a um, barbette on the stern. 4-inch guns there. A bunch of 4-inch guns on turrets. And a whole lot of 3-inch guns and some 2-inch guns to top it all off. The ship is not fast at 19.5 knots. My destroyers at 32 knots are way faster. She has a substantial amount of armor, meaning that I probably can't even pen her with my guns. Not even the superstructure. Yeah, a little bit of the superstructure I can pen, but not much. When it comes to torpedoes, she has an anti-torp 2. Okay. Uh, she has anti-flood 2. She has an increased complement of shells. And they're heavy shells. That could mean that she's more susceptible to flash fires. And many bulkheads means that she's fairly well protected against the type of attack that I'm trying to execute. A full-on torpedo attack. Okay, they've switched fire. It's now the V4. Or at least some of the guns from the V4. Or are targeting the... Oh! Are targeting the V4. Uh, pop it. Because I might not have the V4 for much longer. If these ships go down, it's 2.7 million. If the Prince of Wales goes down, it's 18 million. Torpedoes away from the 4. Let's see if the torpedoes are going to be doing anything to change the direction of the ship. Yes. Eight. Smoke screen up. You're going to have to power through. I need you to come in here as well at maximum speed. Now with that course correction, the Prince of Wales is losing a lot of speed. Oh, this is not good. She's still correcting course, which means that my torpedo attack from the eight is not that likely to go through. Come on. Send a general bouquet in her direction. All nine of them, please. Torpedoes are away. I doubt that the eight's going to survive it, but the Prince of Wales is definitely not going to be capable of dodging all of that. I say, and the... No way in hell. Really? No, you're not. We have inflicted one hit. But damn, the Prince of Wales is on point with her gunnery. Despite... Despite having those... Well, fairly green crews. She is putting the hurt on these DDs. Okay, we're just going to have to do as much damage as we can and then bug out. Because I don't think we're going to be able to kill it. I was hoping to execute one large torpedo attack against these guys, but it doesn't look like it's going to pan out that way. Get out. They already have a lot more sea control than I do. But if I can just... Oh, come on, V7, get your smoke screen back. Get your smoke screen back. Yes. Smoking up. Oh! That was a 10-inch hit. Uh, yeah, drop it. Torpedoes away from the seven. And we're just going to try and disengage. Hopefully leading to a substantial repair bill for the British. But it does look like the Wales is doing a really good job of avoiding almost all the torpedoes. Oh, ammo detonation. That's juicy. That's going to put some hurt on the Wales. I'm going to hope I can disengage, even though the 7 has taken on quite a bit of water. Now, in my mind, I'm still using torpedo boats, and because of that, I'm operating these attacks from very short range. You could argue you're way too close. These guys have a torpedo range of 6, why not use it? Well, because the AI has this weird precognition of knowing where the torpedoes are going to be. And I find that unless I go with a very short-range action, it generally doesn't work very well. It generally doesn't go through. Or I hit one torpedo, if that. Nevertheless, the Prince of Wales is probably going to be out of commission for a long time. Sadly, at the expense 
at least for now, of one destroyer. This guy is surviving by just 1% buoyancy. But they have lost sight of me. Oof. The V7 is dead in the water. I may be able to pump out some of the water, but I kind of doubt it. So, overall, these first encounters were not great. The heavy cruisers, while they were able to sink two of their battleships, or sorry, two of their heavy cruisers, are going to be out of commission. And I already lost two destroyers at the price of some substantial damage to the Prince of Wales. But little more than that. Little more than that. And I'm being blockaded. So the first bit of the campaign, not stellar. So with this, the destroyer attack failed because I lost a destroyer and I had one severely crippled. If it wasn't for the maximum bulkheads on the V7, she would have been dead. But she survived, although with a serious loss of life. How long is the V7 going to take? Yeah, they got 448 victory points of that. I don't know how long it's going to take for the British to repair their ship. I can only have a look at the V7, which is going to take three months. And, of course, at a greater price tag. The normal price tag for a destroyer is 2000 or 200000 a month. This thing is more than double that. On my already strained budget, I don't like this one bit. I think it's time to order up a new battleship. Because I could wait until my shipyard gets completed, but it's going to take too long. I'm still going to need, what, 24? Uh, so 22 more months, or 20 more months, probably. So until that is done, let's get another battleship going. And just order it up. It's going to cost me a million a month to build it. But at this point, I don't really feel like I have a choice. Especially considering it's going to take me 18 months just to get that thing operational. Now, the next mission is going to be a fight but with two heavy cruisers and four of my DDs against four of their heavy cruisers. This is something that the DDs will have to carry, but um, the heavy cruisers might prove useful as a distraction. All right, guys, that'll be it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are down below, and I shall see you soon for more videos of the campaign.